Good evening. My name is Alba Yula, product manager for The Real System. The Real System is an advanced rehabilitation technology using virtual reality designed to engage patients in rehabilitation. Today's spotlight session is on the use of virtual reality to support post rehabilitation. In this session, leading expert in spinal cord injury, Lawrence Harding will be speaking about his experience using the real system to support his members at the Axis project in their post rehabilitation journey. Here's a little about the real system. The Real System is an immersive, full presence virtual reality system specifically designed for upper body rehabilitation under the supervision of a medical professional. The lightweight headset transports patients to a new, fun, and therapeutic world, tracks the user's motion, and allows them to see their whole body in the environment while minimizing the potential for motion discomfort. The use of virtual reality in rehabilitation has been studied extensively by clinical researchers. Immersive, full presence VR can induce neuroplasticity, allowing the brain to learn new abilities and relearn abilities damaged portions once had. Built using evidence-based therapies, the motor and cognitive activities in the real system are both fun and engaging. When the therapist comes in, you're gonna get so motivated. But when they leave, it's gonna be like, I wanna do more the next time. The real system consists of the patient headset, body sensors, and therapist tablet. It is entirely self-contained, wireless, and mobile. No additional hardware or tethering is required. This simple, portable rehabilitation tool was designed for easy setup at the patient's bedside, in a rehab center, or with mobile therapy. The rehabilitation specialist can easily tailor each session to the patient's therapy plan, track progress, and store data for documentation. The Therapy View tablet allows the rehabilitation specialist to select activities and adjust their parameters, customizing the experience for each patient. The sensors capture the patient's movements, including range of motion and time spent in each activity. Data is securely saved in the patient's record for progress tracking. The real system creates a delightful and engaging experience that is designed for patients to do more sessions, longer, and with more intensity. I'm so excited to be using it with patients. I think that it is gonna be a game changer for therapy. <laughs> Let's talk about how the real system can enhance your rehabilitation practice. Now I'm excited to introduce you all to Lawrence Harding. Uh, Lawrence is a licensed PT for over 20 years and the developer of the Spinal Mobility Technique, a manual treatment intervention designed to maximize trunk strength and control in people with neurologically based disability. He's also the founder and director of fitness at the Axis Project. Lawrence, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me here today, Abel. <laughs> Um, tell us a bit about your background and how the Access Project came about. Thank you for that. Um, I started my professional career working at Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, it's a large teaching hospital here in New York City. And after doing different disciplines, I actually ended up in the latter part of 12 to 15 years I was there, uh, working in the outpatient setting, working with people with spinal cord injury. And it was really there that the big question that became access got into my head and I couldn't let it go because it was, what happens to people when they leave rehab as I knew it in the hospital? The answer of course being that they go back into their communities and there's this thing called community reintegration and they get into that and they're good. They may come back for other things, but they're good. And I was like, so what is this thing? And the idea that the people with chronic long-term, especially neurological problems, were just out there adrift. It kind of bothered me. And so meeting several people who actually some were patients, some were people who some of those patients who are now friends and colleagues brought to meet me, specifically Alex Elegudin, uh, Benjamin, yeah, Yannick Benjamin, and also George Gallego. The three of them have been instru instrumental in helping further this creation of the Access Project. 
Uh, so we started it in 2014, and then we opened our second center in Brooklyn in 2017. And so it's really a community for people who have long-term chronic problems and need assistance and can benefit from guidance throughout the course of their illnesses and conditions. That's amazing. Uh, can you describe some of the common challenges that Access members uh, typically face? Yes. Uh, we... Uh, Axis work with people who are sometimes immediately diagnosed or they've sustained an injury like spinal cord um, that could be, say, six months post when they've left the hospital to maybe two years post when they've left the hospital, finished their outpatient kind of routine. Um, and then from that starting point, we have members who have been uh, living with MS for 30 years, people with spinal cord who have been living with spinal cord injury for 40 years. And so when you look at what is done and what I as a clinician would do in the hospital versus what I as a clinician need to do for them in a setting a post rehab like that, uh, the challenges are really very different what they want. Number one, what they want. A lot of times, you know, things come out, you know, I want this goal of being able to drive. That means I need to improve my transfers. Okay, it can come five years down the road. And do they need to go to therapy to improve their transfers? No, they have the transfer technique down pat, but now they need to improve the components that will make their transfers better. Strengthening, stamina, practice. I'm there for the practice. We have the tools necessary and the guidance can come from myself and the staff that I work with. And so taking people through those journeys of change because of need, change because of uh, chronicity itself, because some of the conditions are progressive. And so as people change chronicity-wise, progressive-wise, we can assist them in all of their functional and also maybe some goals in terms of keeping their independence, because that's what it's all about. People want to be independent. What are some of the key objectives that you look to achieve with ACTS members? Ah, yes, and absolutely. Maintenance and uh, following the physicality of people through the chronic phase of their condition or their illness is paramount. Because again, in terms of rehabilitation, one is nobody likes going back to a hospital. Let's not say that. So nobody wants to get sick and end up in a hospital. And so if you can do things within the post rehab, such as uh, maintain cardiovascular health. 80% of our members at Access Plus are actually people who use wheelchairs. And so cardiovascular issues are paramount in terms of maintaining their ability to survive and live fruitful life. It leads into trunk control and posture, not only for pain, but also for functional activities, driving around, being driven around, or even sitting in an office for six hours, eight hours in a chair. Some people cannot handle that. And so bringing the fitness component in and also the lifestyle component in at Axis for that, those ideas is really, really important. The second point to just to touch is some of the conditions for people who come to Axis are members, uh, they are progressive. You know, spinal cord injury, injury is there and then the sequelae are because of the physicality, but some conditions, MS, for example, does can get worse because of the nature of the NS. And so it's important to be able to provide services for people who are having to go through that process rather than simply relying on the hospital. And so we hope to be a stopgap to prevent people going to the hospital at least limited. I wanted to learn a bit, how did you hear about the real system? I'm an adjunct at uh, Hunter College in the city. And uh, I do some other teaching around New York City and actually across the country when I go and I give lectures and presentations. And so one of my colleagues who I won't say when and how many years ago <laughs> I had worked with, uh, she has graduated, of course, again, years ago. And so she turned me on to it. I had previously, of course, known about the use of real systems within the acute and early way habilitative stages for people with CVA, sort of mirror technique and mirror imagery uh, was what I thought and felt that it really provided for that population. Um, but I was really intrigued when it came in. So I guess I'm very curious about uh, the real system activities. Which ones do you use the most typically and why? Most favorite. We use the Nest Hop 
game which I really think does a lot of things because what it of course brings in upper extremity reach activities but it also makes people focus on how much they do or do not use their trunk so that like that because it increases that awareness again deeply into the trunk but brings in the upper extremity activities the balloon pilot is another really good favorite where you are using your head control because it's not just about the chunk being part of the whole spine. Where the neck goes and where people turn and move their head is really, really important. So that's been a really useful one to show people how much they can be one-sided. Again, if you're talking about chronicity, that becomes really fundamental. And uh, a couple of others, like the chuckle ball, you know. So people are exploring the different activities. And the nice thing is that because of the nature of the variation within the different upper extremity activities and the lower extremity activities, you have a good range to play within each of those fields. So that's been fun. So what do Axis members think of the real system and its activities? Uh, they like it. They like it. Um, again, several members not only did engage with it in ways of newness and the novelty aspect for sure. But in finishing and using the device, a gentleman who has a long history, 15 years or so, uh, living with MS, uh, uh, with the system, he was able to actually give it an action during those uh, things that he did with the system. And he came back and said, you know, it really made me feel that I could understand where I was and it forced me to do things rather than simply saying, I want to sit up. It gave me that tool to understand what I needed to do for work and for strength and for stamina. This idea that members can do a sustained activity for a period of time, and that's big for access. It's nice to be able to say that with the real system at access, we can also give members feedback, direct feedback. And I was thinking about this today, in that um, a lot of the machines do have some elements of feedback as you're doing, but most people don't really look at those. In the system, like the real system, once the person is done, I can physically show them the actual results and the improvement and or the need for improvement that the system will deliver. And I like that deliverability that the system brings. And we've been able to show people, yeah, you did this for this many reps, you did this for how long, and now you need to work towards these goals and these functional benefits that will come from achieving those goals within the machine. So that's been really nice. And Loris, what advice or thoughts would you have for other therapists looking to adopt a VR technology like the real system? Um, I think that uh, I've always been a person who expands and pushes out in terms of use and also in terms of what ideas can be generated because of that use. And so in using the systems I have, not only in looking at just trunk control, trunk control issues and what that leads to for, say, upper extremity movement. Um, another thing that I think an important thing is that you can use the system to do what you want rather than simply saying this is what it comes with. And so, for example, using uh, external devices, can they hold on to therabands and they, can they work out with bands while they're doing this to kind of feel how that added resistance comes in as they're doing this? the real activities, you know? Can you go in and help to destabilize their control while they're in that sitting practice? And so the unexpected perturbative balance gets mag improved because again, that separation will allow them to kind of find new tools and new tricks to keep control, you know? Um, one of the things that came to me is have them sit on different kinds of surfaces. You know, sit on a firm surface, sit on a wobbly surface like a Rojo cushion, sit on a jelly surface like a J cushion, and start to incorporate these things into the whole idea of what the machine allows you to really use. And so I think it's a great tool that can really answer a lot of different questions. And so find out, are you at inpatient rehab? Are you in acute care? The machine really is variable and can really allow you to really hone your interventions for each of those specific populations. And, and that's really a big thing that I got from it. It wasn't only about working with people with CVAs. Lawrence, thank you so much for your time today. I, I look forward to hearing more success stories coming out of the Axis project in the future. Yeah, it was a fun time talking with you, Alba. <laughs>